Dareker, your today's host. I hope you all are doing well and getting used to your work from home life with all pros and cons. I'm really very excited to tell you that in this pandemic, my grandparents have gone completely digital and I'm sure this is becoming a ghar ghar ki kahani. India ab sach mein digital ban raha hai. But as usual, every ghar ghar ki kahani has a villain and this kahani too has a villain. Do you know who? Rising cyber frauds. Considering this practical reality, BIIT Alumni Association organized a webinar on protecting your environment from cyber threats in current lockdown scenario by Mr. Heman Dusane. Mr. Dusane is an alumnus of BIIT and has 14 years of rich experience in cyber security domain. He is a continuous learner with passion for innovation and risk management to drive bottom line business contribution. He is also globally awarded for his contribution in the field of information risk management. We, the BIT Alumni Association, are glad to share this webinar for public awareness through our YouTube channel. Let's move on to the webinar. Welcome everyone for the webinar on how to tackle cyber security by, uh, with living with uh, COVID-19. Hope everyone can see my screen. The objective of this presentation is to create an awareness amongst the community for individual as well as for the corporate uh, on the secure use of technology and intermedia. It also to make understand some of the possible preventive measures where one can utilize them to avoid getting victimized for cyber crime. So as a cybersecurity consultant, I want to introduce my life, uh, what are the different angles to it and what other people are thinking about it. So when I represent myself to a society, they think that I, I'm like a cop and interacting with people, just inquiring them, asking a lot of information. Uh, when I talk to my family, they think that I'm, I'm, I'm an executive, interact with people in terms of a uh, lot of information gathering. My clients, they always think that I, I earn a large amount of money and I keep playing with that. My friends, they think about, I keep traveling to different destinations and enjoy my life. What I think about myself is yes, some of the sessions which I'm conducting right now is creating awareness, making people aware about security practices in cyber hygiene. But what I actually do is I sit on a laptop, I get a context of the organization or individual, I identify the loopholes or the weakness in the environment, and I help them to protect their information assets. That's about my life. Let's start. Uh, in today's world, we are connected to every device uh, from, uh, I, I can say 24 by seven, not from the start of the day till the end of the day. Today, even if we go for a sleep, one of our devices is connected to another device, either through a Wi-Fi or a mobile network continuously sending our information or exchanging information between these two devices. So internet and smart gadgets are now integral part of our life in, in day to day. Even if I'm, I'm working on office environment, if I, even if I'm, I'm doing some postal work, accessing a video, talking to my friends, everything is now part of this integral life. So how can we, we understand what are the, the pros and cons of it and how we can protect these information assets ultimately protecting ourselves from the cyber threats. So before we get into it, I want to introduce certain terms to individuals or students uh, who are participating in this webinar to understand what are these terms. Cyber crime, it's, it's a very generic term which refers to any criminal activities anyone is doing through a medium of internet and, and through a cyberspace. Cyber security is means of protecting your information assets which you store on various equipments and devices from unauthorized access, unauthorized use, unauthorized disclosure, disruption, modification, or destructions. Cyber law, it's a term which is used to describe the legality of this cyber crime in terms of how we can use the, the technology, specifically the cyberspace, uh, which is internet. There are certain laws defined, which we are going to see in, in, in next slides in, in, at a high level. 
one of the the law known law in india is cyber law which is represented by the indian act which was defined 2008 and was amended recently in 2018 there are a lot of amendment happened from 2008 to 2018 so what are the current scenarios for individuals or organizations stress students and staff why this is happening because uh, due to physical distancing and self isolation everyone is now almost connected 24 by 7 on internet through their devices because they don't have any other option to socialize with your friends their family their colleagues and because of them the the landscape for the attacker or, or the hacker becomes easy that n number of people are available for him to exploit it so it makes individuals more vulnerable for online attacks because not a single individual or not everyone follows the same cyber security practice across the globe everyone has a different understanding some of some of the user they don't even understand the implication of technology that's why it becomes easy for attacker to exploit them shift in the risk risk profile this is for individual or organization the increase of remote access using inter, in, internet is increased from 10% to 90% this happened because of covid 19 everyone is working from home getting tuitions online sessions from home giving exams from home interacting with their customers from home everything is happening from home from one location hence the use of internet has been increased significantly for individual user and that's the reason the shift in the risk profile earlier it was targeted specifically to only organization now every individual is being targeted for cyber security attacks definitely a lot of corporates institutes colleges are giving their uh, environment remotely accessible to their students and and employees but they don't have a adequate monitoring environment to ensure the information or the in, the internet traffic which is coming into their environment is is adequate and authorized to access the information what they are providing it by that becomes a challenge for a lot of organization and institute and definitely uh, the limited control on the publicly accessed infrastructure and application like google drive shared drive dropbox all these are used by all the individuals today who are working from home or or being on getting tuitions online all they are using all these uh, online infrastructure public available infrastructure without any controls so let's understand what are the what are the scenarios around it why the upward trend is happening as we discussed the huge increase in internet and smartphone is one of the reason second is the individuals are now sharing their personal and work related information over the internet they don't know it's whether it's it's secure or a secure channel though they are they are connecting to their colleges or offices they don't know how the information is transferring critical and sensitive information are shared over internet lot of people are now keeping their information on on social drive social media and that becomes a challenge for individual as well as organization financial transaction definitely now everyone is using internet so extensively even we use the mobile wallets paytm and phone pay to pay all kind of money to avoid the touch uh, on the physical currencies so it's like a touchless currency we are talking here security controls are never 100% you can't have a security 100% implemented it's a evolving chapter all the time you have to improve now and then on every day and definitely this is the same bad guys are always trying to be ahead of good guys because of it they are being successful with most of the attacks they are doing it so what are the kind of a cyber crime we can see in this picture is as phishing is one of the very common attack we'll discuss about it in a couple of slide uh definitely sim swapping where one of your mobile uh, sim card is getting swapped with someone else they start getting your otps for your financial transaction or maybe your facebook account 50% more than 50% your smartphones are vulnerable to general social engineering attacks or cyber security attacks a lot of health information is now getting stored because of the telemedicine uh, because of the doc apps where you are giving your information to your doctor or or smartphone all these are valuable information for individuals and and the last picture i can quickly say about like a lot of kids are trying to get online again they don't have a playground to play and and being being smart about it so 
they don't get a parental uh, advice as well as the parental monitoring around it when they connect it to the internet. Just to make everyone aware about it, that the cyber crime is not fun. There are certain action can be taken easily by uh, by government as well as certain agencies in India. So what are those things? Uh, cyber crime is controlled by ITAC, as I explained in the earlier slide. And there are certain respective Indian penal code, which are constantly involving. Even the, the Indian Data Protection uh, Bill, which has been represented in last year, December 2019, still status is pending but it is still getting reviewed and it may be published soon so that will help to protect a lot of uh, cyber crimes related to individual information personal information which is getting utilized today nowadays a lot of people are getting calls from sir do you want to buy a, a credit card so are you looking for a personal loan you you think about it like when did you give your number it's not you have given that number directly to that person or company. Somewhere you have put it maybe online when you are registering your information, but that has been passed to that person by some medium. It's not been hacked. And that's where that, that data privacy, the protection bill is going to help individuals. Second point is talking about a uh, lot of government agencies are controlling the traffic on the internet, which is open to internet, whatever you are storing on the internet, processing or transmitting or internet. Service provider has a mandate in case of any cyber breach or a cyber attack, they have to provide all the information to government agency without any dispute. That's a mandate by government. Yes, our government is upgrading their forensic lab. They are also updating their technologies. They are, they are also trying to be ahead of bad guys to become a good guys. And there are stringent punishment for cyber crimes. So what are the current trends, uh, current threats in the market? Uh, as I said earlier, phishing is very common on the right side of the corner. If you can see the picture, you can see from 2017 to 2020, the trend is still still upwards for the phishing, uh, but the virus and malware has been has been reduced. Uh, why it is common? As I said, a lot of people are utilizing internet, and it's become easy for compromise their credential through a phishing link. Uh, you may be receiving an email from your known person or, or a named family to your known person and you click on that link. That link says that, okay, put your credential, give your card number, click on the OTP, give your information and you pass on that without any knowledge. And that becomes a challenge for individual because your information is compromised there. Ransomware attack. A ransomware attack is basically a, a kind of attack where your information is encrypted without your knowledge. You get a pop-up on your screen saying that uh, if you want to decrypt this information, you have to pay money to certain account, which is again a Bitcoin account in a Bitcoin money. If you don't pay that amount in X time, let's say in two to three days, your information will be destroyed. And that's a fact. Uh, these ransomware attacks cannot be easily recovered. And you can't you can trust them even if you pay the money because it's it's in bitcoins. You can't actually do the transaction. It's not legal in India. And even if you do it in real money, it, it's very highly impossible that you are recovering your data. Brute force attack is basically a kind of attack where people are trying to get your credential and trying to connect your machines and trying to compromise your environment or your institute or a corporate environment through your systems. Phishing attack. If I look at the statistics, uh, 150, more than 150 companies, top executives have been compromised last year, till, till I think so till first quarter of this year, uh, just through phishing attacks. So not just for individual or students or, or corporates, but even the executives who are working in the big companies are getting targeted for phishing attacks. Very common challenge is improper software patching and updates, which leaves your computer or system vulnerable. If I don't update my system on time, it's vulnerable for any kind of attack. I don't know whether it's already compromised or not. Denial of service attack, it's kind of an attack where I try to compromise systems and ensure that the system is, is used for creating more attacks on different systems. That has been happening nowadays. Again, I'm seeing because of non-patch system, non-patch environment. And definitely the last one is malware attacks on the mobiles, on the new technology, Wi-Fi. All these are vulnerables 
and hence mean getting compromised. So this is a current threat landscape which is, is challenging nowadays. If I talk about uh, attack vector um, and exploitation parameter for institute or a corporate, there are five to six agents I can see here. One is the malicious insider who has a, a malicious intent to conduct activity within the, the environment or the institute or a corporate. Insider agents, these are the people who are actually uh, like a spies who are sitting inside your environment, either virtually or physically taking out information and giving it to their original organization from where they got the request to get out the information. Disgruntled employees or the students who are not happy with the environment, definitely they are, they are less bothered about thinking before clicking on phishing attack or phishing email. Right? They will just click on it. They don't bother about it and things are compromised easily. Careless worker, if people are not made aware about their roles and responsibility on their day-to-day -day activity, they become more careless and they, they can knowingly or unknowingly compromise the environment. And third parties who are helping the organization and institute to keep their environment up to date or to sustain their business for day-to-day -day activity. If they are not following certain cybersecurity practices or hygiene, they are likely to get compromised. So these are the attack vectors. What are the exploitation parameter? Phishing is very common. Exploiting known vulnerabilities. If I use a common username and password or a default password set by my uh, internet service provider on the router, that's a known vulnerability. I can get, I mean, I just Google it. What is a password for TP-Link Wi-Fi router? I get the default username and password. I can put it and exploit your Wi-Fi network. Zero day vulnerability. If I talk about upgradation in the technology, like from 4G to 5G, 5G is not yet implemented fully all over the world and no one knows what is the implication of it, what are the vulnerabilities in it. So that becomes a zero day vulnerability which can be exploited by attacker if he comes to know before a good guys. Unpatch system, we talked about it. And taking advantage of security misconfiguration of your IT component. If I don't set up a password for my devices, for my environment, definitely the attacker can easily get inside my environment and compromise it. If I look at the larger impact uh, on individuals or institutes or organization, financial impact is, is definitely more because uh, if my banking credential is compromised, anyone can take out my uh, money from my bank, transfer it to some other account or use for sh online shopping. For institutes and organization, if their information assets are compromised, they have to pay a lot of uh, final uh, financial penalties to their customers or regulatory authorities. Reputational for institution and organization, if their their website or their company is being compromised, data is being compromised from that company, a lot of other customers, they stop doing business for that company because the reputation of that organization has been gone down. Legal and compliance, as I said again, a lot of legal and regulatory requirement to be followed by individuals, organization and institutes. It's not just for organization or companies, it's for individuals as well. So if you don't follow those practices, the larger impact is you have to pay fine, you have to, I mean, you have to be fined for the imprisonment as well. There are a lot of operational challenges in terms of if I'm I'm conducting an online class for my students or giving a demo or online to my customers and all of a sudden someone compromised my online session like the one I'm taking right now, Zoom session and start, start some hate video or a religious video on it. That becomes a challenge for me to manage my reputation as well as my productivity is lost to complete my task. That becomes a challenge. And compromise of critical information. It's a bigger challenge for anyone, whether it's for individual or organization. If my data is stolen, it has a bigger impact on my oral activities. So what are the security measures one can follow or or organization can follow? So let's talk for individuals. Avoid phishing scam. As I said, think before you click. Even if you receive an authenticated email from your friends, colleague, family member from your company, Think twice before clicking on it. Even if it is on Facebook, Twitter, any kind of a social media, just don't click on it by looking at the picture. You like the picture, it looks funny, uh, kind of a link. I click on it, I see 10 funny videos or 10 funny pictures. 
but you don't know on the back of it someone is actually trying to install a malware on your system and compromise your system so think before you click on it ensure your wi-fi connection is secure do not use default credentials password which is set up by the isp provider or the internet provider set up your own password for your wi-fi ensure the the password is shared with the limited people whom you know and you keep changing that password on a periodic basis be cautious when using unsecure network sometimes what happen we are outside and we have to connect to the the uh, one of the meeting or a session on an immediate basis so be cautious when using unsecure network you may be on the public wi-fi use vpns if you are institute or organization is providing that facility or use uh, other mechanism to connect to the corporate environment stick to password back practices and do testing as i explained for the wi-fi it also relates to your devices and other uh, it components set up two factor authentication so everyone must be aware about two factor authentication which is used like similar to otp that you receive an otp as a sms or a, a password on your mobile and you put that as so your username becomes your identity your password which is you know it becomes the first factor of a credential and the second factor is something you receive it on time and you put into the application so these three becomes more important factor for you to secure your environment so even if you are using gmail you can set up two factor authentication for banking accounts you can set up your two factor authentication ensure devices are protected with antivirus software any kind of device whether it's mobile or a, or a laptop please install antivirus if you have a, a license operating system that is recommended to have it for everyone install at least the inbuilt antivirus and encryption tool which you have in your laptop do not leave your physical devices unattended as you follow a practice for your mobile like you keep it all the time within your pocket you don't allow even your family member to touch it follow that practice for all your physical devices which store the information do not keep them away from you keep apps and operating system up to date we talked about keeping information uh, systems operating systems up to date which is important nowadays now and then every day there are new vulnerabilities coming in the market so if you don't keep your information system updated including operating system and the antivirus you are already compromised or you are getting compromised for new attacks adopt video conferencing security best practices so if you have uh, seen in this zoom video conference we have allowed only the panelists to be part of this one side of it where they can share the screen or they can talk about it all the attendees are can only put their questions in the question and answer sheet so basically restrict the video conferencing to only the authorized people create waiting room before allow anyone you validate that person in the waiting room if he is from your organization or from your environment you allow that person to be part of your video conferencing know how to identify malicious activity try to learn try or learn new technology or new things and be aware about it how to securely use it because we can't avoid technology in in current scenarios especially in covid 19 we are remotely working we are remotely giving all the updates and exams and deliveries to customers so we have to be aware about how securely we can use those environment and how we can identify the malicious activity don't share your personal information if it is your personal information you should not share with anyone correct be vigilant be skeptical and be safe it's very important to be vigilant be skeptical ask questions have doubt about something if you think it's suspicious raise your queries to the person who knows about it and get answers up from it it's very important for institutes and organization assess your corporate core infrastructure it and uh, ensure for remote working it is being properly assessed implement strong security for all the information assets like network and and other devices which are helping your remote environment whether it's students or or individual corporate employees or who are connecting to institutes and organization even the organization also take the strong measures again ensuring the security at the perimeter integrate cyber security plans in your business models for remote working today none of the business in this world 
because of COVID-19 can function physically on site. Most of the business are trying to function remotely, except the manufacturing, because there's no choice uh, for people to manufacture devices or components remotely. They have to go to site, but at maximum business are trying to conduct a remote working business model. So include the cybersecurity plans into it. Establish cybersecurity protocols from, for remote user to ensure authentication authorization. As I mentioned earlier, two-factor authentication. It's not the only the ownership of individual, but even organization or institute to enforce the two-factor authentication for all users who are connecting to their environment. Limit access to databases containing censored information. Don't keep it open to everyone. Use secure tools to ensure protection of data. Train remote user to use these tools and features securely. As I said, at least enable the antivirus and encryption on your devices. Train your employees and, and students about how they can enable and secure their individual machines. So ultimately you secure your corporate environment. Update your cybersecurity response plan to address challenges of COVID-19. This is very important. There are a lot of challenges because of COVID-19. It's just not about social or physical distancing but it's more than that the people are now being scared about even interacting with their own family member physically so in such challenging time the compromise of physical identity uh, sorry the logical identity or the cyber identity is it's very common social engineering or attacks are very common and that can also impact the organization and institutes so you have to have a cyber security response plan to tackle such scenarios Maintain awareness about security, locations, and performance and overall work hygiene of all your users. If I talk about largely adopting the cybersecurity framework for institutes and organization, there are six parameters we have to focus. First important parameter definitely is, is the identify phase where they have to identify what are the threats in, in the environment and what are the possible risks because of those threats to my information assets. The second step would be to prevent. Implement controls which will try to prevent the, the exploitation of those weaknesses in my system because of the threats uh, in the environment and will not impact my organization in terms of a risk. Sometimes what happens even if you have a preventive control, uh, still those uh, the threats gets inside your environment and try to exploit your environment. That's where the detect control will help you to identify what's going inside and outside your organization. That's very important parameter. Once you identify or once you detect that in uh, the attack, definitely you have to respond to that attack to either implement a new control to take out that particular malware or antivirus attack or malware or virus attack on your environment and then respond appropriately to those, those incidents. Once you respond to it, definitely you have to recover your environment to normal state. So you may have taken a backup of your environment. If not, then you have to create the parallel environment for recovery of your business. The last stage is predict. So now you have gone through all these stages and understood there are certain threats in the market. And this is a trend that let's say they attack on your environment every week from particular machine or from particular IP address. Now you can predict the next day attack and you can block it before it comes inside your environment. That's how you completely adopt the cybersecurity framework. Quick solutions. Uh, these are very generations for individuals or organizations. Training and awareness is very important. Be aware about all the cybersecurity hygiene. Implementing right access control, whether it's an individual machine, mobile or a laptop, or it's a corporate device, you have to implement right access control. If you protect your mobile using password or, or a, a, you can say pattern, then you also have to protect your all other assets. For institutes and corporate, you have to conduct a remote scan on your infrastructure and application when you expose these to your students and, and employees. When you give online session, ensure that they are not going to compromise your assets and take over your assets. You have to conduct the remote scanning and ensure the environment is intact. Continuous monitoring, as I said earlier, it's very important. It has to be regular and consistent about all the parameters. It's a key factor to identify and detect 
from outside as well as from inside if if you are institute or organization you have to partner with managed security service provider mssp where they help or support you with insights what they have the knowledge to help you to optimize your investment definitely to secure your environment so uh, as an organization from invent owners how we can help you we conduct all these uh, offering remotely uh, we conduct vulnerability assessment penetration testing on the network and mobile applications we conduct secure code review we can ensure your cloud infrastructure is is secure enough by conducting a review on the infrastructure we can conduct 24 by 7 monitoring on your environment based on your needs on the critical assets we provide consulting in various compliance and certification requirement like iso ssai hipaa gdpr which is one of the privacy requirement in europe and yes even for individuals we also conduct awareness training sessions so i would like to play a video which i liked uh, on internet and make you aware about it that what is an internet so I play that video now would you be comfortable living in a house that someone else had the key to what if an underground tunnel led into it from a public park where its windows could never quite close all the way would you trust it with your safety and your privacy the internet is that house This is not to say never go into the house, but rather you should know the hazards before you store all of your valuables there and do what you can to protect them. So, why is it insecure and why can't we just fortify it until it's safe? Well, first of all, the internet was not originally built to be what it is today. It's like someone decided to expand a shoebox into a skyscraper. The internet originally developed when computers were huge and so expensive to own that only universities big businesses and a few governments had them. The point originally was to let these massive supercomputers talk to each other. And as soon as two computers could send information back and forth, we had a network. The network gradually grew until personal computers emerged in the 1980s, and then it exploded. Soon people were not just talking to each other, but also exchanging money, playing games, reading news, shopping, and doing everything we associate with the internet today. Other devices started talking to the network too. Phones and cars and refrigerators and elevators and power plants and much much more. But the ease of all those devices talking to each other came at a price. Security. One computer could send another instructions to delete everything on it or take it over. We call these viruses and malware. Or one person could steal another's identity by guessing, cracking, or extracting a password. Vulnerabilities such as these will never completely go away because they're built into the internet's very architecture. Criminals use them to steal billions of dollars. Governments use them for surveillance, and hacktivists use them to further their political goals. Between 2004 and 2013, over 1 billion records of personal information were stolen or leaked through data breaches of major organizations. As a thought experiment, let's imagine what a perfectly secure internet might look like. Users would not be allowed to download or install anything onto their computers. All internet traffic would be monitored and regulated by bots and humans, massively limiting the number of websites you could visit. In order to log on to a website, you'd have to type in a 100-character password, submit a genetic sample, and whistle a tune. The servers that hold data would be kept in heavily armed fortresses on the moon. And even with all these safeguards in place, some clever hacker would almost certainly still find a way in. The good news is, even with our flawed internet, there are simple things you can do to protect yourself, and there are a lot of people committed to making the internet more secure. The house that is the internet may be built on a shaky foundation, but it's been a home to innovation and an unprecedented free exchange of ideas. It's up to us to make it livable in spite of its flaws. Ow! I think so. Thank you so much. Uh, Ronak, we can take questions if we have. Thank you so much for that very very interesting presentation, Hevan. I guess, uh, yeah, like you said at the start, with all of us being online for classes, for meetings, for literally everything now, everything's remote now. So the number of cyber crimes is similarly increasing, and we won't 
know until we've suddenly actually been affected by it. So it's much, much better to be prepared than going in and continuing work without having any awareness of all this. Thank you so much for that. So, um, so questions. If anybody has any questions, they can put them in the Q&A. Um, Shrilesh Mane says, please share the video. It's very nice. Uh, we'll see if we can do that. Uh, yeah, anyone, yes. anyone has any questions? Please type them in the Q&A box, guys. Tahir, uh, could you please uh, enter the questions you had? Are there any tools to know whether our devices are hacked or not? That's the question by so, Shravan Kumar. So, so as I said, I mean, you can implement a simple tool like an antivirus scan your device. If your device has a virus inside it, it will detect and let you know if it has been compromised. There are a lot of commercial tools available in the market. Uh, it is recommended to have it, not mandated. Uh, that can help you to identify whether your devices are compromised or not at the high level. Okay. Radhika Boch asks, what is your view on the anonymous hackers? Anonymous in quotes. Anonymous hackers are always anonymous. They don't come into picture until they have been caught. Okay. Next question again by Srilesh Mane. On Android devices, which antivirus software should be used faithfully? Any known recommended uh, antivirus which, which you can download from Play Store, which is a uh, commercial version, not a freeware or or uh, open source or a crack version. Onkar Sangali asks, how to check whether my system is secure or not right now as some of the virus and malware can not be detected like no media. I answered that question earlier about uh, you can adopt any uh, freeware or commercial software which can help you to identify whether your system is compromised or not. Simplest one is the antivirus which will help you to detect viruses on your system. Varad Kulkarni asks, what are the opportunities for freshers in the cybersecurity domain? A lot of opportunity. I mean, it's it's a gold mine. You, if you have a curiosity and a passion to learn, you can you can enter into this field. Tahir asks, uh, what are the best tools and skills needed in cybersecurity role, basically to start a career in the profile? What are the best tools and best skills, tools and needed, skills needed in the cyber security role, basically to start a career in the profile? So uh, for for any attacker, uh, I think so more than a tool, it's more of a curiosity you have to have that where I can find a flaw in the system. It can be uh, doing by social engineering with, with someone he knows. I can get credential easily by, by doing a social engineering attack. I don't need a tool. Or I can have a best tool like a Kali Linux, which can help me to and get technically inside the environment like a device and get a lot of information out of it. Skills, yes, you have to be technically sound to understand uh, what is a, a threat, what is a vulnerability, what is a risk, what are the attack vectors, how you can exploit it. So it's more of a, a learning curve first. The most important would suggest is you should have a curiosity to learn new things. Heman, since you mentioned social engineering, could you take two minutes to talk about what is social engineering? Social engineering is something that you like nowadays, you or one of your family member get a call uh, or SMS that uh, I'm calling from XYZ bank. Uh, we found that your debit card or credit card is compromised. Can you please let me, let us know your current card number? That person enters that number and triggers the OTP, which gets received on your mobile. Knowingly or unknowingly, we give that information. If you are not aware about it, it's a phishing call or the social engineering call. And then my all the financials or the, the money from my account get transferred to someone else or the online shopping happens to their account. So it's one of the one of the common example of social engineering attack where 
the attacker is trying to compromise your social ability to interact with other people they compromise the human factor there they don't compromise the technology there okay so how, yogesh is asking how secure are today's multi layered security operating systems yeah, i mentioned it in the first slide nothing is 100% secure next question from ahmed adam how can we automatically detect security breach and also use automatic measure to tackle the issue you have to enable all the tools what you have installed on your device which are helping you to do the monitoring they will give you an alert and they will help you to automatically tackle the issues again i am trying to stick to the antivirus example it's most relevant if i keep my antivirus up and running 24 by 7 with the live update Uh, i get pop up that my system has a virus immediately when someone tries to put a virus there or through a usb and i can i can easily disable it or delete it okay surushi is asking how to ensure the security of personal data stored on cloud like google drive or one drive etc i can't answer that <laughs> because uh, see anything you're storing on the cloud it's it's your responsibility to protect it the easiest way to protect it is, is not to store but if you have no option to other than storing on the cloud then try to have a password protection and encryption on that data before you upload it to the drives pratamesh don't off for the free services these companies also provide the commercial services where the terms and condition of protecting your personal data are different than free services try to adopt the commercial services okay i think that's something that most people do not know that there is actually a paid plan that is where a you paid plan from all the services but yeah yeah who google everyone provides it yeah uh pratamesh is asking is really operating system does operating system really matter i didn't get the question so uh, this is just an assumption i guess he is asking Uh, would you be more secure in a windows based operating system or a mac or a linux based operating system so again if i relate the example of now today everyone being online the attacker gets more exploitation attack vectors right similar for the windows most of the systems are windows based since they have a larger platform to exploit the attacks mac and linux are lesser used so lesser attack vector lesser lesser vulnerabilities Onkar is asking: Is Windows Defender okay, or should I get another antivirus for Windows 10 laptop or PC? If it is a licensed OS and uh, you have a Windows Defender enabled, it's a basic protection. But if you want to have an advanced protection, buy some commercial tools which are available in the market. Chetan Chaudhary is asking: uh, What do you think about the use of blockchain technology to secure the Internet of Things or Internet itself? blockchain technology it's it's very interesting field and it's still evolving uh, yes there are a lot of uh, advancement happen where the internet of things or basically the physical devices connected to uh, internet is being protected by blockchain technology so yes it is is it it is it is more secure than what we have as a traditional technology yogesh is asking how do we verify that any link that we are clicking and entering the sso is secure links which divert us to enter google account details or something like that for registration so you can click on the the lock icon or the symbol when you see the ssl https symbol uh, there you can click on the detail of the certificate it talks about from which certification authority you have received this that website has received the certificate if it is a well known certification authority like semantic taute veritas all these company that means it's it's a secure one uh, sometimes it say it's a self signed certificate though it says https so if it is self signed do not enter your credentials okay so even if it is self signed then it still shows https it depends on how you are connecting okay um let's see next question so akash singh is asking what are the skills or knowledge one should have for a successful career in cyber security field i answered this question earlier yeah uh, tahir is asking sorry long question a lot of freshers feel that to get into cyber security role we need experience a lot of it is this true how likely is it for a fresher with preliminary or basic theoretical programming knowledge to get a role 
So you can start your career as an analyst, as a fresher. You learn things, as I said, you have to understand the 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 context of how the attacks been happen on what are the attack vectors, what are the exploitation parameter as used. Once you learn that, yes, you can grow easily in the field. Piyusha Kulkarni is asking: Can freelancer be can freelancer be field for cyber security, or we have to be in company cyber team to provide service? What's the it's up to you which 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 uh, type of uh, career you want to choose. Both are demanding. It's up to you. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? I don't think so. If you have any more questions, please type in, guys. Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, I'd like to invite Professor Subhash to give the closing note. I believe Subha Professor Subhash is probably disconnected. Uh, no problem. Even on behalf of VIIT, I'd like to really thank you for your time today. Uh, this was a really interesting session and I think something that is also very relevant uh, in current situation. Uh, thank you so much. On behalf of Subhash sir, I'm taking the liberty to say this since uh, he's disconnected on the call. Uh, and if the students or if the attendees want to get in touch with you, uh, could you share uh, some email address or something where they can actually reach out to you? I can share my email address on the chat. Will that go to everyone or to yeah, you? Yeah, you can just put in all panelists and attendees. Okay. Guys, don't spam my email ID. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, you can copy that email address if you want to get in touch with Heyman. Thank you so much, Heyman. Look forward to having you more in future sessions as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.